Yeah, it's a great point. I was going to ask him that. John Cooper, our lads guide to the NFL draft. John, sorry, we're running a little bit late from a guest previously. You've heard or seen uh, discussion that uh, coaches are leaving college or it appears as if the uptick in coaches leaving college to the NFL because college has become so damn complicated with NIL and the signing periods and the transfer portal. Have you said or heard that much yourself from where you are? Well, for, you know, I've kind of deduced it myself because, you know, as a former college coach, I am talking to college coaches. You know, there's a frustration level with the NIL uh, and all of the things that are going out, NCAA potential rules, proposals that are being made. And, you know, it's a tough way to go. You know, you're, you're, it's almost like you're putting together a junior college team or a JV, you know, are changing every year. You got a different team every year. So it's, uh, you know, it's, it's a tough business, you know, the, and, and, the, and the other thing is the goal of a lot of coaches is to coach in the NFL. It's not for everyone, but that's that goal. So, so I think it's just, uh, just in talking to college coaches, you know, that's, that's kind of what's happening. Yeah. Yeah. I would, you know, I'd say like for all the people that say, Hey, these guys are going to the NFL. Like, well, that's the, that's the gig, right? I mean, that's a great job. So why not, why mm -hmm. not go there? Yeah, and there's like for sure, and I think that's what a lot of guys would like to do. I have, a, I have college coaches I talk to would love to get in the NFL. They're trying to get in, uh, but they're satisfied where they're at for now. But uh, but for sure, the NIL thing and what's going on in college football is frustrating. And so somebody that's a high level college coach might be tempted just uh, because of the headaches. But the money's good either way. No, it is good, uh, better than ever uh, on both sides of it. So the Combine's about the launch. As someone that has uh, studied NFL prospects forever and ever, what are some things that you cannot not do at the Combine that would hurt you? Well, in your interview, you better be you know, straight up in terms of what you're saying, and you better not contradict yourself uh, you know, in terms of that. You know, they want somebody that you know, comes off well. Uh, it looks like they're going to be a good teammate. You, know, you have to be very careful. Uh, you know, and everybody looks at it a little differently because they're going to have a lot of different questions. There's some tests that you're going to do. So I'd say that's the number one thing. You know, if you're a top prospect or a borderline top prospect, you know, you need to come off in those interviews, you know, fairly well. Some teams it doesn't matter. It matters more than others. But that's important. Um, you know, and it, it meet expectations. I think that's the key. You know, you, you need to meet your meet what the expectations are for you. John, have you gotten into specific team needs yet? Or are you still in the evaluating the prospects? Still evaluating the prospects. You know, we're looking at team needs. You know, you have to in terms of that, but we're not going to put that together until we see free agency. What happens with that? You know, it's pretty obvious. With some teams have needs, but they're going to address them in free agency. And you know, there's a lot of teams that have cap issues they have to deal with. So what their needs are are yet to be determined in many cases. There's a, still a pretty good idea, you know, what some teams need, but we haven't really got down to the nitty-gritty of addressing that just yet. To that end, if you need an offensive lineman, is this draft, uh, particularly with guard and tackle, pretty deep where you can, if you miss out on one of those guys in the first round, probably find somebody second, third, even fourth round? Yeah, I think so. I think the tackle uh, – room is, is really good. The offensive tackles are great. The, the interior linemen, maybe not as much depth, but there's going to be some of these guys that are tackles right now that are going to kick inside and play guard. Uh, you know, the centers are not great. Um, you know, overall, uh, there's a couple of guys that are intriguing in terms of being uh, uh, NORAD from uh, uh, Penn State, for example, that could possibly – but uh, and the kid from uh, Oregon is tremendous. He's a really good player. So, yeah, you've got a couple, but other than that, the depth isn't that great at guard or at, at center. Anyway, the guards, yeah, okay, tackles, you're going to get one. John, we know that, uh, I mean, there's been the term underwear Olympics out there for forever, all the focus that's on the 40-yard dash. He just asked you a question a couple back about what can you not afford to do, but where do you, as a as a seasoned scout and analyst, what kind of BS do you sort through from the combine, and what do you really focus in on that you feel like matters when it comes to the draft? Well, you know, I think for that, one of the comments was made to be by an old-time scout, you know, anybody can look good running around in shorts. Hmm. Uh, and and there's truth to that to a degree, but you know you want to confirm 
some things that you see on film. If somebody comes in and runs a that's a corner and runs a four eight forty, and you had a little you were a little suspect about his ability to stay in phase on a deep route, you know that's going to bother you. And the guy might be the greatest corner in the world in terms of zone concepts and things like that. But if he doesn't have that flat out speed and can run, and you don't see that, that's going to be a you know a red flag. So that's a concern. And with uh, that position in particular, and you're also looking for guys to stand out in the drills, but it's not going to necessarily make a difference if the guy wasn't a good player. You could be an all combine guy, as we call it. But you know, if so, if you're not showing up on film, a great workout is not going to help you. But if you are showing up on film and then have this great workout, then obviously that can vault you up a little bit or the other way around. You're a great player, but there's some things that don't show up on the workout. might drop you down a little bit or it might be the separator between that person and an, that guy and another guy in terms of where you might slot him in your, in your, uh, in your draft board. I'll never forget, and I cannot remember the name. I, well, it was David Warren, Florida State, he, a high school football player that we covered out of East Texas. Um, but he had a back problem. And, and, and mm-hmm. some people knew that, but the medical exam that they do, they'll know things about you that you broke your leg when you were in fourth grade. Is that true? Yeah, they're, they're, they have a medical report that is very, very thorough with the doctors. They're going to get your medical records, but they're also going to do a physical there. And they're going to find out things, you know, you know based on that. And uh, that medical report is really critical. That's one of the things that we don't have access to. And the final medical report doesn't come out until after the combine. But, and the combine is part of that, finding out that information. But, you know, we wonder sometimes that we got a guy up in the middle of the first round or middle of the second round, all of a sudden he's in the fifth round. And we say, ooh, there's something, you know, either a medical report or the, the report on maybe what he's been doing off field that he shouldn't be uh, that has dropped that guy way down. So, um, so there's things that, you know, none of us have access to that the teams get a lot of the final reports the week before the draft. So there's a lot of, there's occasionally, I shouldn't say a lot of, there's occasionally some guys that are going to drop off the radar because of some things that come out there. John, uh, when it comes to the quarterbacks, I know it seems like today is a day where, where Drake May is the name that's getting tossed around a lot with criticism and things. I think Merrill Hodge has some comments. Everybody's buzzing about that. And that's going to be the case with a lot of these prospects. But a guy who seems to be, I don't know, getting some pretty favorable grades, but people have a lot of questions about is J.J. McCarthy just simply because we haven't seen him have to do maybe some of the things that other quarterbacks had to do because of just the personnel around them. How do you go about taking a look at J.J. McCarthy? Where, do you, where does your kind of focus lie on, on what he does well and, and what maybe is a concern or, or maybe more of a question mark at this point in his game? Well, you know, he shows very good leadership. He can command an offense. He makes good reads uh, for the most part within that scheme. And, you know, again, it's a limited scheme. You know, which, quite frankly, all of the college schemes are somewhat, most of the college schemes, I say, are somewhat limited in terms of how it's going to transfer to the NFL. But, uh, you know, McCarthy can move. He throws a nice ball. It's more of a one-plane throw sometimes, I think. And I'd like to see, you know, some different uh, elevations on some of those passes. But, uh, you know, he's a, he's a solid quarterback, and I can understand why a lot of, you know, one of the guys that works with us is really starting to catch fire with him. And, uh, you know, we haven't kind of made the determination yet whether we're going to vault him up ahead of Drake Bay. And the reality of it is they're going to be pretty close and it's going to be, you know, who you like. But he's definitely on our radar as a potential um, first-round quarterback. John, Texas has two very good defensive tackles in this draft, Byron Murphy uh, and Tavondre Sweat. Tavondre Sweat maybe more of the Ted Washington, Vince Wilfork uh, type, maybe more close to Wilfork than Washington. Uh, and then uh, Byron Murphy maybe more what you classically see now in the NFL. Where do you have those guys kind of slotted right now? I think Murphy's a first-round pick. He, he's one of the – maybe the – you know, there's going to be a debate between him and Newton from Illinois as who's the best – defensive tackle in this draft right now we like newton just a little bit better but i'll tell you what murphy is a solid player he can rush the passer he's got get off he's what nfl defensive line coaches are begging for give me somebody that can get off the ball and get to the quarterback and he plays the run he's solid against the run he's a really really good football player i think one of the questions that i have a little bit having watched both of these guys a lot is 
how how good are they going to be without each other? Because <laughs> Sweat, he, t- he eats up a lot of double teams, and because uh, he's he's a big, tough, strong, physical kid, he's a push the pocket guy. You know, they gave him a little five technique work this year, and you know he can get off a block and 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 you know escape, and he's not going to chase quarterbacks down across the field, but. He's better than a space eater. I mean, he's a really good football player. We we kind of see him on the fringe of that, you know, that high second day pick. You know, right now there's a lot of people don't like him as much as we do. I don't, I think, but but we really like him a lot, and we think he's, you know, those two guys are going to be the two of the top five defensive tackles in the draft. So there's the combine, and then eventually there's the, each school, and like the Big 12 this year is having a, 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 an NFL media or NFL pro day in Arlington where the Cowboys practice. And then there's also the uh, personal or whatever visits. The teams can have a certain amount of those. Which of those in order are the most important? Well, the Big 12 thing I, I, you know, is new you know, in terms of that type of thing. But I think the, the workouts at the school, for these guys, it's, let's say somebody doesn't perform at the combine. He runs that four eight forty. Maybe he's injured. Maybe he pulls something and uh, is not able to do his best. Then that workout becomes very important for that guy. Obviously, you got two players that aren't going to throw. The two quarterbacks, Daniels and and uh, Williams, and then you've got Malik Harrison who's not even going to go to the combine. That's something new. To, to do that. So obviously for those guys, those workouts at the school is going to be really important. So I would say that, you know, some of these guys come in for, like you say, personal visits. And, uh, you know, the thing there is, again, we want to confirm what kind of guy is this? What kind of teammates he going to be? Is he going to fit into our building? You know, those things are important because you really don't know for sure until you get him in the building and they sign that contract. You just don't know a hundred percent, but you want to get the best possible read on it. You can especially if you're going to, you know, put a first round draft pick on somebody and spend that money. You know, you want to make sure you've got somebody that fits, checks all the boxes. Uh, Michael Penix, do you learn more about him against Oregon, against Texas when he was unbelievable? Or do you learn more about him when things did not go well against Michigan? Well, you know, things didn't go that well against Michigan, but he's still a solid player. He's not, you know, he can do things on platform and he can take off and run. Uh, you know, he's not perfect. Um, he, he's in the, in our opinion, more of the second tier of that group of quarterbacks, uh, you know, after the top three or four or five, uh, you know, Bull Penix and here are very close. And, you know, somebody might jump up in the first round, take either one of those guys. You know, Penix, his biggest issue in our opinion is that injury history. He's got, you know, a couple of ACLs in there. And, uh, you know, we're wondering how the medical is going to show up. Obviously, won't have access to that, but you know we're not sure he's a first round pick. You know, maybe because of that, guys aren't going to be sure he's had that history. Been fine the last couple of years, and you know he had two really good seasons in a row, which he needed to have uh, in order to be in this conversation. Uh, so uh, we'll see. You know, it's, it's going to be interesting to see where he goes. You know, Bo Nix has some similarities. You know, to that. Uh, the injury factor wasn't there, but, you know, hot and cold quarterback. Um, and Penix, to a degree, is the same guy. But there's a lot of talent there. There's a lot of skill there, and it's going to be interesting. There's some quarterbacks down the line that, you know, I wouldn't, you know, sniff at just because they might not have the athletic tra- the absolute traits and, you know, and things like that, too, that might be in the mix. That somebody's going to take as a potential uh, backup that could develop into their starter eventually. You know, Brock Purdy and Aiden O'Connell are, pretty good examples of guys that didn't fit the mold and uh, end up being able to show that they could play in an NFL offense and be successful. John, you said you were a former college coach. And so it, it brings me to an example. I was at a Baylor pro day and I won't tell what position room it was, but I was in a pro day and the coaches actually allowed me, Gil Brandt was still alive, the great hall of famer. He said, mm-hmm. you need to come into one of these and listen to what is asked and how the coaches respond and uh, all these other coaches and sc- uh, scouts, pro scouts, were there peppering the coach, not in a negative way, but asking about a player, attitude, injury, motor, all of that. And he was, he never blinked. He, it was, and, and basically even maybe some things that I would have known. Um, how mm-hmm. important is it for that college coach to make sure he doesn't protect his player, he's true about who he actually is, 
and yet also he's representing that player. Well, I think you have to be honest. You know, if a guy's got negatives, uh, you know, they've got to come out. You know, you can't lie because, you know, if you want to be able to promote a player that's really good down the road, you know, you can't soft soap something. You know, I'll give you a good example of that. You know, we years ago when I was, you know, doing some part-time stuff and there was a uh, corner out of UCLA, and I don't mention his name, who uh, we had some guys that I knew in the NFL had some questions about and wanted to see if I would do some snooping. Found out from the coach that I knew – that the guy was a coward. <laughs> He's a coward. <laughs> and so, you know, and that in a nutshell kind of tells you what you need to know. He was brutally and you know bluntly honest. Now the guy did get drafted and played in the league for several years, uh, but he had to, you know, bounce around and change positions and things like that. Tremendously talented individual, but he wasn't going to be a standout the guy that you're going to pick in the first round or anything like that. So he was like a fourth round pick, fourth or fifth round. And the team that took him, it was kind of the last corner on the board, you know, that they felt had the athleticism that they wanted. It was a kind of a down year for corners. So, you know, that kind of thing is, uh, is important. I think a coach needs to be honest. He can't soft soap it. John, thank you, man. Appreciate it. Great stuff today, as always. Glad we had you on, as always. John Cooper, uh, again, with our last guide to the NFL draft. Baylor has now made it official.